Okay, asynchronous. So synchronous, we're doing things face to face. What about asynchronous? And I think a lot of institutions and a lot of academics are choosing asynchronous methods right now because students aren't necessarily prepared to learn in an online environment because they didn't sign up for it. So we're using these asynchronous methods in conjunction. So let me give you three easy ways to do it and then one that might just take a little bit more planning. So here's the easiest way to deliver your asynchronous lecture. Now, is this the best practice? Probably not, but once again, being realistic and kind to myself and my expectations and saying what I need to make sure is the students get the content. So a very easy way, take your PowerPoint presentations or your Prezi or whatever tool you were going to lecture from and just annotate it. So at the bottom of every slide, you type out what you would have said on that slide, examples, places in the books you want them to look at, and then you upload that and ask students to look at it and Maybe during a synchronous session, you'll talk about it. Or maybe you expect them to each post one thing on the discussion board that they found interesting about that. Super easiest asynchronous method. A next one is just to write an overview of your lecture and then share that. So if you think of an announcement that you would post on um, your learning management system, you just say, here's the five most important things in this chapter. And then you write a little overview and then maybe you have a web link you want them to go to and look at, or maybe you um, have a picture that, that is relevant to that content. But basically you're just writing out what your lecture would be. And you know, again, and you're only hitting the gold nuggets. If I had two weeks to do this, I would cover all this, but here's the most important things everyone needs to get. Here's the easiest way. Use something that somebody else already created for you. So I gave you a whole list of great places that I go to snag good content for my online class because I had to get them up really quick. So for example, TED Talks. I use so many TED Talks. I'm, obviously, the people that do TED Talks are brilliant. And in 20 minutes, they're covering beautifully very complex topics. So see if there's a TED Talk on the topic. Here's another one. Uh, a channel on TeacherTube or on YouTube is called TeacherTube. If you've never been on it, go to YouTube and then put TeacherTube in. Thousands and thousands and thousands of videos created by teachers on different topics. So if I go in and say into TeacherTube and say the four functions of management, I will likely be able to find a video another faculty member has created on the four functions of management, I can snag it and use it. If you teach in the maths, in the math area, or Khan Academy, great videos that you can snag and use for your classes. So many great, so much great content that comes with our publisher's content. So look at the publishers of your textbooks or eBooks that you're using in your course and see, do they have PowerPoint presentations already created for that chapter that I could grab and use for my class? Here's another good one that a lot of people aren't aware of, and that's Merlot.org. So if you go into Google and search it, it's M-E-R-L-O-T.org. And I put a picture of that on the bottom right-hand side. And you can see you go into this organization and you browse by discipline. So I could go in and put public relations, um, non-probability sampling research methods, whatever. And then it's gonna pull up a bunch of content that other faculty have created that is free for me to use. So there could be lectures, there could be assignments, there could be links to videos that I could use and I can pull that kind of content into my course. Um, by the way, on the lower left-hand side of your, of your screen, you're seeing a picture of what TeacherTube looks like and the different content areas that just came up. And then don't underestimate your peers. So I knew one of the classes that I'm now quickly transitioning to online over the course of a weekend, one of my peers had already taught online before. So before, you know, obviously we're not at school. So I got online and said, is there any chance you've got any videos created? This is the area that I think I'm going to have the most difficult time with. And this faculty member sent me a bunch of content that I could use in my courses. And of course, this is what we're doing right now. This is peers learning from peers. What are you doing? And so many of these ideas that I've received. I literally in my office have a stack like this big of articles that I have pulled online from other colleges saying, use our things, share our things. Um, so certainly reach out and see what your peers might be doing. So all three of these are very easy ways to get material to your students in an asynchronous manner. Now, this is not as easy, but so valuable. And that is to 
record lectures on your own. So how can we do create pre-recorded lectures? There are so many ways that you can record lectures. Um, you don't even have to use any of these tools. These are ways that I like. Now, at my university, we have Kaltura. So I have it and every student has it. It closed captions the videos. It does all of these amazing things. So I record most of my lectures on Kaltura, but you may not have access to that at your institution. So all of these are examples of different tools that you could use to record lectures. I'm gonna show you how to use just one of them. So. Any of these are good choices for free tools, but let me just show you how to use Screencast-O-Matic. So if you have never created a lecture, I'm gonna show you how to use just one of these tools. Again, let me just give a word of um, advice, and that is if you do create lectures, make sure you close caption those. So whenever I create a lecture, if I don't use Kaltura, um, or Zoom, which will close caption it, I make sure that I upload it to YouTube so it will close caption it for me and then I pull it back into my learning management system. And I'm gonna show you how to use this and then give you a couple quick tips for um, how to create a great video. So this is Screencast-O-Matic. This is the first lecture caption tool I ever used. I still use it today, fantastic tool. It will record anything on your screen, your voice, you can use a webcam, you can save it to your desktop or you can publish it to their cloud site so it doesn't take a bunch of um, your desktop storage space or put it right in your LMS. This is how you use it, how easy. So you go to Screencast-O-Matic so step number one, and then you still see this orange button that says sign up, it's free. And um, I just want to mention that the free version obviously doesn't have all of the great bells and whistles that the recorded version does. If you, if you have the paid version, and um, you know, obviously I don't work for any of these places, but it's, it's like $1.69 a month or something like that. It, it's, it's not very much to get a paid version of it. And in the paid version, it will close caption your videos. You can edit them and all of that. But again, let's look at what open educational resources are available to us in conjunction with what we can use use that our publishers that we know are high quality content has developed for us. So you go into Screencast-O-Matic, sign up for a free account. The second step is you see the orange button and it'll say launch the free recorder. So if you don't want to pay, just launch that free recorder. The third step is then you'll get a, a pop-up box and it'll say you want to open the screen recorder. And as soon as you open it, you're going to see a box on your screen um, that looks like this. So whatever PowerPoint presentation or whatever you'll pull up, I just pulled up one of my PowerPoint presentations that came with my publisher's content. And then it gives you this box that you can resize any shape that you want. You can say, just show my screen, still in my pajamas, don't wanna be in this video. You can say, just show my webcam, I just wanna do a lecture or welcome video for my students. Or you can say, show me both. I show the screen and then, and if you say show me both, it's gonna make you a little box in the bottom right hand corner. Um, if you say just you, you're gonna be that big talking head and just your screen, they're only gonna hear your, your voice. Then you click on that record button um, you'll see it down at the left. Here's the thing with the free version, with the free version, your videos can only be 15 minutes long, which that's the best practice anyway. They actually say six minutes is the ideal time for recorded lecture. So we'd be much better to do four six minute lectures than do a 24 minute video anyway. Um, okay, so I would hit record, then here I am recording it. And you can see the blue button with the two lines, the little hamburger lines. Um, so I'm recording, yada, yada, I'm talking. You can see me down in the bottom right-hand corner talking as I go through my slides. When I'm done with my video, um, number six, it'll say, I'll hit the stop button and it'll say, okay, you done? And once I click that done button, it gives me a choice. Do you want to upload this? Do you want to sh just share it or do you want to edit it? So I said, I wanna, I, I wanna upload it. So screen seven, when I said that, it said, okay, where do you wanna upload it? Do you wanna save it as a video file on your computer? Do you wanna upload it to the Screencast-O-Matic site? Or do you wanna upload it directly to YouTube? So maybe you have your own YouTube channel and you just wanna upload it right there and let it be closed captioned. I said, upload it to Screencast. So number eight, it said, I'm publishing it, give your video a name, chapter number eight or whatever it is. I always suggest that you put your name somewhere with it. So chapter number eight, COM 205, 
or so it makes it easy to find in your whole list of videos and then you publish it and it gives you a link you can see here's the link this is just a fake video that I created um, to, to show you how to use this but you can see it gives you a link down in the bottom that you can share in your LMS or embed it automatically in. When your students watch it, this is what they're going to see. They click on it and there you are talking to them, yada, 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 and um, they're watching the PowerPoint slides. And just so you know, when you go back into the screencast site, it will give you a list of all of these videos. Now, we know how important analytics are in online. It's it's so much easier in a way in a face-to-face -face course because I know if a student isn't paying attention, I know if they're not there, I, if they didn't turn something and I can talk to them. But this way, at Screencast-O-Matic in the free version, which is what I have, at least gives you a little bit of data. So like, for example, I can see I recorded this video on March 12th and nobody has seen it yet. But you can see I recorded one on February 27th for my students and I got 20 views. I have 18 students in the class. It doesn't give me a lot. It didn't tell me, did every student watch it? Did they watch the whole thing? But at least I know that every student likely watched it and a couple of them went back and watched it multiple times, which is the benefit of asynchronous, right? They get to watch it more than once. So here's a couple quick best practices for recording videos. Keep them under six minutes if you're going to use a, um, an asynchronous methods like this. Several short videos is better than a long video. Plan your material ahead. Um, and then make sure, as you would if you had a student with um, a visual disability and you were describing your slides, on this slide in the top right-hand corner, you're seeing a picture of da 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 look down to the left hand corner where you're going to see this. So what we say when you're recording a video, think about describing what's on the page in addition to just narrating it like you would if you were giving a, a live lecture. And remember, some of your students may just have to go with your PowerPoint slides and your voice if they can't get on. Um, use a microphone, you get better sound quality, talk slowly, I know. I probably need to take that advice myself, right? But the best thing, if you talk slowly, when they close caption it, it's going to be more accurate. The faster you talk, the less accurate your closed captioning is going to be, then you're going to have to go in and make a lot of edits so that it's accurate for your students. Here's a great one. Make sure that your laptop is level or above. If it is below you, they're just staring up your nose the whole time. And the most important one, don't worry about perfection. We're being kind to ourselves. If, if I had months to create vi these videos, they would be brilliant and beautiful and I'd be on a gr green screen in the back and they'd be seeing all of the, you know these great things and I'd be embedding quizzes, but I'm being kind to myself. This is what we have time to do to make sure that students get the gold nuggets. So when you say your ums and your ahs and oh, where was I again? That's okay, we're human. Okay, what are your students going to do while they're watching your videos? So when I record, you know, when, when, you're, when you're having a synchronous session, you can call students out. When they're watching your video, I usually try and give them something to do. So I might say, here's the five points I want you to pick up from the video. Or here's a list of terms that you're going to hear me talk about. Write down the definitions to the terms. And then... I would also probably tell them in the book where they could find the definitions to those terms in case they didn't hear it during the video. Or I might give them, you can see the one I did on the top right hand corner for a business class I, I taught. As they're listening, they're trying to fill in the blanks. And then there's also obviously some um, things that are not just knowledge level that I'm asking them to apply and go back and look at. Padlet's another one of those great free tools that you can go to. Um, if you have your students watch a video, you can have everybody go to a Padlet, P-A-D-L-E-T dot com, and you can go there and um, you can kind of set up these private password protected virtual walls where students can talk to each other. It's an, it's an alternative way to use a discussion board. Um, so that might be another tool that you might consider. Okay, two, two important things. Whatever you're going to have your students do in class, whether they're synchronous methods or asynchronous methods, whether you're having them watch a TED Talk and then go do a Padlet or you're, you've recorded a video and you want them to fill out a worksheet or you've recorded a video and you just want them to watch it before class and be prepared to talk about it, be so clear in what students need to be doing. So this is an example of the week um, or an assignment that I would have in my class. 
you're going to submit this activity and here's a, here's a link. You're going to be watching this video and I've embedded it into the course. While you're watching it, I want you to think about these four questions because that's what you're going to be writing your two-page paper on. The clearer you can be to students so that they know what to expect, the more likely they are to focus on the gold nuggets in that video, whether you created it or somebody else did. 